Hi, this is Meghnad. In this module, we will learn how to work with images in HTML. So let's get started. Now, I need some images to show how in the website. So what I'll do now is very quickly, I'll search for free nature stock images. Now let me copy this and I'll go to the browser and paste it. And I'll just open this. So I'm just searching for free uh, because we don't have want to have any copyright issues and all. So what I'll do here is I'll just take any two images just to show in the uh, web page. So what I'll do is now let me take the first one. I'll just use snipping tool. I can click on it and I can take it, but yeah, I'll just select snipping tool and I'm copying. I'm taking the small image here. Now I'll file, save as. I'll sit in my desktop. I'll put it here as in my desktop nature1.png. Now I'll just take one more image. Let's see which looks good. Yeah, I think this is good. Let's take the second one is this one. Right, this is looking nice. So I'll take till here now. Let's take this and I'll put this file save as. I'll put this in my desktop. I'll put this as nature2.png. Now I got two images. Now what I'll do is let me close this. Now I just close this. Now I want to show this image in a web page. So for that, let's go to the folder where we are creating our files. Let's go to File Explorer and D Drive, HTML, My HTML Files. So this is where we are creating all the projects so far, all the lessons code. So I'll put this in archive now. If I click on this new folder, I'll just put archive. So I'll just put all this in this. Okay, done. Now what I'll do is I'll create a new folder for learning images. So I'll just name this as my website. And inside this, I'll create a new HTML file. I'll put these images here. Done. So I don't need this in my desktop. Let me delete it. So we have the images here. Now I want to show, show these images in my website. So let's see how to do this. In the same folder, I'm going to create HTML file. Now go back to this one and write here Visual Studio Code. Let me open it. Now I will, um, yeah, we don't have any files here. File, new file, and control S. Yes. And where do I want to save it? I want to save it in this website. And I will give, I'll select here HTML. I'll write here home.html. Save it. Now here I want to add an image. So let's take, I'll write here my favorite images. And here I want to add the first one. So I'll write how to add images. You have to write IMG and you have to give SRC source is equal to. And since both the files are in the same folder, so if you see here, HTML is in the same folder as PNG. So you don't have to give the path of it. You can just give the name of the file because both are in the same folder. So I'll just put here nature1.png. That's it. Now let's save it. Let's go back and right click on this. Open with Google Chrome. Since the default browser is Google Chrome, I don't have to every time to right click on this, open this. I can just double click on this. Now you can see here, it just opened my favorite images. It's showing that image. Now if I want to give more width for it, I can increase the width of it. I can increase the height of it in images. I can do that. So now let's see this now. I'll just write here width is equal to, I can give absolute width like in pixels. Let's say I'm giving width is equal to um, uh, 800 pixels. So by I just left at 800. Let's save it. Let's go back and refresh it. Now see here, width has increased to 800. Automatically, proportionately, the height also increased. So now, because I didn't mention the height attribute, when you increase the width of an image, proportionately, the height also will increase because I didn't mention the height. Now, now I gave here, so how we know whether 800 means this much because I need to know my screen width. Now, if I see here, right click on this, display settings. Now you can see my screen, you can see the width is 1366768. That is the width of my screen. That means the, the width is 1366, one the height is 768. Now, when I put the width as, let's take, I'll put the width as 1300. So it'll almost occupy the full screen now. Let's see this now. I'll go back to HTML and I'll remove this my favorite images here. Now I'll just put here 
width is equal to 1300. So it should almost occupy my screen because my width is 1366. Now let's go back and refresh it. You can see it's almost just just this much left here. So all of you got it now how to I hope you got it. What does it mean by width of it? That's my screen resolution and I will give height here. So remember the height that we see here is the total height 768 is from the top till the bottom of this screen. That's 768. But since this browser occupies some height here, so maybe this also occupies some height here. So I'll just give here maybe around 680 or something so that I'll get full screen image. Now let's see here. I'll just give height is equal to 680. Now let's save it. Double quotes is optional for attributes, but yeah, as per HTML standards, it's good always to give double quotes. Now let's save it. Let's go back and refresh it now. Now you can see here almost, almost occupied the screen a little bit because of this height. Anyway, that's okay. So that's how you need to mention. So if I change this height to 600, it'll be less than my screen height. You can see here, you'll not see the scroll bar. So you can see. This is the this is where you have to add images. Now, now you can also give in in relative width instead of giving absolute pixels, absolute width. You can also give relative width. That's 50% or 60% like that. Now see here, I'll just put 50% and height also. I'll just give 50%. Now if I save it, that will take the 50% of the browser height and width. Now if I refresh it. You can see it is taking 50% of the width of the browser, 50% of the height of the browser. Now the good thing is when I reduce the browser size, the image size also will reduce as per the browser size. See here now, I'm reducing it. And see here, when as and when my screen browser is reducing the size, it's going 50%. The width is 50%, the height is 50%. So when you give percentage, see when I'm reducing the width, when I'm reducing the height, width is not changing, right? So that's how we can mention the relative width. And if you put the pixels, so when you mention, when I mention here absolute height and width, when I reduce the browser size, it will not change now. Now let's say this now. Let's right click on this, right click on this, open with Google Chrome. Now if I reduce the browser size, since I mentioned as absolute width, so it will not change. The image will not change, but we'll get a scroll bar. See here now, if I increase it, image is same size but I'm just getting a scroll bar here so that image size is same because I have given here absolute width. Okay, so I hope all of you got it what is absolute and relative width. Now what we'll do is in real world projects, we may not have images and web pages in the same folder. That is, so here when I create, uh, what I'll do is inside website, you'll have multiple folders. Now you'll have a folder new images, new folder images, and these images will be there inside this folder. Now, now in the same folder, you don't have images. See, in websites folder, you have HTML and images folder is there, but images are not inside this folder. So here, if I give like this, it will not work now because it's not, image is not there in the same folder. See here, image is not there in the same folder. So now if I save it, if I go to the browser and right click on this, open with Google Chrome, I will not see the image. So it's not displaying. So now what I have to do here is I have to mention SRC is equal to in the same folder, what we have in the same folder as per the HTML file. So HTML file in the same folder, we have images folder here. So what I have to do is I have to write images slash. Now what happens in the same folder anyway, we have images. So you'll go to images folder and then it'll search for nature1.png. Now let's see here, let's save it. Let's save it, let's go to the browser and refresh it. You can see we are seeing the image. And also in case the image is not there, let's take we might need to display alt. So this alt message will help the message that gets displayed if image is not there. So I'll just mention here um, image not found. Now purposefully I'll remove this path and I just want to see the message now. Now image will not be there now. Now if I refresh it, you can see image not found message. So that's the use of alt message. So whatever you mentioned that alt message will be displayed if the image is not there. Okay, now I'll just put it here. Now, all good. Now, not only this, you can also mention the complete, this is called relative relative path. So if you see here, 
I'm giving the relative path of the images with respect to my HTML file. But I can also give the absolute path. So absolute path means this one. I'll copy the path and I will put it here, complete path. So now I'm just giving the complete path with image, D drive, HTML, my files and all. Now if I save it, if I go back and if I just open this, it's getting the image. But yeah, um, it's not good to put uh, absolute width all the time. Absolute um, uh, complete path, it's not good because. Now let's take if I send this to my friend. So what I'll do now, if I send this, uh, zip it. I will zip it, right click on this, send to compress zip. Now I'm sending this to my friend, let, let me delete this. Now, now let me close it, let me close it. Now my friend got this zip file and what he did was he's opening in, in E drive or he's opening in some other drive. Let's take, let me delete this. Now my friend put it here in his E drive. Let's go to, let's go to this PC. Where is it? D drive, HTML files, my HTML files. Here's my website. Now what I'll do, my friend has downloaded to his E drive and pasted it. Now he'll expand it. He'll, he'll just let me extract it. Now if he opens a page, if he double clicks on this, he will not see the image because I am referring to, I am in my code, the code inside this will be referring to, if I open this with notepad, I'll show you now, see here? The code inside this will be pointing to D drive and my friend has copied it to E drive. So when I send it to someone else, they also should copy, should have the same folder structure. Otherwise they'll not see the image. That's why absolute path is not good. You always have to put relative path. So you always have to put till here. Okay. Because if you even, because in real world projects, you'll be deploying your code in multiple servers and servers also should maintain the folder structure, which is, which is not possible. So this is, this is good. So this is called relative path. Now let's go back to our initial folder structure. So let me, what I'll do now, I'll just do control X and let's go to D drive this PC, D drive, HTML, my HTML, and here is my, I'll just put it back. Okay. Now, now I will open this with Visual Studio Code. Now, that's about absolute and relative paths. Now, one more thing, in real world projects, you may not have this HTML outside. You'll also, in real, in real world projects, you'll have something like this. Right click on this, new folder. I'll just create here UI and you'll have your new folder, scripts. And like this, you'll have in real world projects. New folder, you'll have here uh, styles. So inside UI, you'll have your HTML files and inside uh, uh, images, you'll have images. So in that case, if I open this, now right click on this, open with Google Chrome. So here, if I, uh, let me open this in Visual Studio Code. Now in this case, both are in the same folder. Now let's see this. Now here, if I give images slash, it may not work. Now what I have to do now, let me open MS Paint. Now how it is there, this is one folder. And here I have UI folder, I have here, now here, I have this UI folder and here I have images folder. Now my HTML file is here, home.html and my image is here, nature1.png. Nature now, both are in different folders. Now what I have to do from my HTML file, I have to come one level up into this folder and then I have to go to this images folder and then I have to go to this image. So from my HTML file, I have to come back one level up and then I have to go to images folder and then I have to put nature1.png. So that's how I can find that image. Now what I have to do here, if I want to come back one level from my HTML file, I have to put dot dot slash. So dot dot slash will take you one level back to the parent folder and then I have images folder and then I have images folder slash and then I have nature1.png. Now, now it should work. So 
This is how you have to go one level back to the parent folder and then images folder and then nature1.png. Let's see whether I can see this. Now I can see it. So I'm seeing the image now. So that's how you have to write. Now let's see how, I just prepared a small PPT. Let's see how uh, we will see the images. Now if you see here, we have three scenarios. The first scenario is both are in the same folder. HTML file and PNG both are in the same folder. And second scenario is HTML file is in the same folder. We have images folder, HTML file and images folder in the same folder. And the nature inside this we have nature1.png images folder. And third scenario in real world projects will be like this, where you have UI folder, images folder. And inside UI folder you have home.html. Inside images folder you have nature1.png. So what we have to do here is, in this case, it is directly you have to give src because both are in the same folder. You just need to give src is equal to nature1.png. And in this case, this and this folder are in same fold, same website folder. So what you have to do is images slash nature1.png. So here you have to give images slash nature1.png. In this case, you have to come one level back from this folder. You have to come one level back to this folder and then go to images folder and then go to this. So here you have to give dot dot slash come back to the upper folder and then go to images folder and nature1.png. So these are the three scenarios which all of you should know. That's how we do it in real world projects when you want to find the relative paths, right? So I hope all of you are clear with how to work with HTML images and this folder paths. So in case if you feel doubtful, please watch it again and be very clear with this. Okay, thank you and see you in the next module.